Hi, this is Millie and Sebastian. We are doing Microsoft Word videos, and today we will be doing the Page Layout tab. Uh, this tab will be broken up into two parts, part one and two. This is part one. Uh, let's jump right in. Uh, I will be starting with my Lemonade Stand uh, Edit 1, which means we've tinkered with it a little bit. Uh, you can download the files to, to go with this. Um, and to make sure you're on the very first worksheet, the uh, final product um, and not any of these other ones down here. Uh, so you should see Annie's awesome lemonade stand. You should see all her awesome employees. And uh, let's see what we can do to tinker this uh, document, starting with the themes. Uh, so themes are a combination of three things, colors, fonts, effects. Um, so you can completely change your theme. And the default is office. So if you have played around uh, from the home tab, uh, with the colors and the fonts of your uh, of your spreadsheet, then you've probably been working in the office theme. Now, when you go and change to another theme, what do you see? You can uh, let's go with equity, and it doesn't look so nice with our pictures as much. But within itself, uh, if we kind of ignore this uh, up here. This table has completely changed within itself. So uh, we have these nice grays um, and then this uh, maroon. And it, it all goes nicely with each other, but not with the custom parts that, that we had uh, created. So um, anything that was formatted as a table is going to, to change. Uh, and then certain fonts are going to change. But then certain cells, like this cell, this huge cell up here, um, we had individually changed that one to be yellow. So it's not going to change along with the theme. Uh, but the tables do. This was formatted as a table. And then um, things like spark charts, things uh, like graphs, they're, they're all going to change. Notice also that your fonts have changed. Um, and th that's all part of your theme. And you can jump around to different ones. Okay. Um, but let's say I like the office theme. But maybe I want to switch over um, back to office. But I liked those fonts that I saw um, with equity. And I can do that. I can import just the fonts of equity. So you see my fonts are different. Um, within my table, but the color scheme that I worked so hard on did, did not uh, change. And I can always go back to Office. Um, I could always just use colors from a different theme without changing the font. Um, and then effects, we're not going to see much of a, too much of a change here, except notice um, that this text box slightly changes in the thickness of the outline. That's part of um, the effects. Great, so that's it for themes. It's really straightforward. Uh, let's move on to this page setup section. Um, in the page setup section, uh, all this stuff has to do, obviously, with pages. And as we see our page now, we're not really seeing the pages, what, what the pages look like. Um, and that's because we are in normal view. If you head on over to your view tab, we're in normal view. Um, so let's go to page layout view so we can actually see the page layout. And here it is. And it looks kind of funny because you know we've got our table being split um, over two pages side to side. OK. Um, and maybe we want to change those things. So, so we will. Um, first off, remember, if you want to hide this white space, go to the gray area in between, double click. So now we can kind of see how our pages would look um, almost as if we were back in normal view, but uh, we got rid of all these margins everywhere. If you want to bring them back, double click again. Um, OK, so let's let's do some tinkering. And to do that, we'll go back to the page layout tab. Now, first off, uh, this having uh, th this table kind of going left to right, it's a very fat, short, wide table. Um, but the paper is the opposite orientation. so. You know, we could just switch to landscape, and that would make a lot more sense. Um, let's go back and get margins. What about your margins? Well, 
we're currently on normal, but you can make some nice wide margins. Notice how wide this white space got. Um, you can do narrow. Um, and then, of course, you can do your own by clicking, heading to the bottom of the dropdown to custom, and you can tinker with it um, to your heart's desire. So you could maybe make a really large margin on this side if you wanted. Um, notice there are separate categories for how wide you want your footer to be and how far the, um, the header and footer are from the top. So let's make this one really tiny, just so you could see an example. So I'm going to put a tiny distance um, and then a larger header. Okay, and there we go. Okay, um, now if I don't like that, I can always, instead of custom, just back to normal. All right, um, let's talk about the size of the paper. That's what size are you printing on? So if I zoom out here, I can tell uh, that this is my standard 8.5 by 11 uh, piece of paper that we commonly print on, but you can switch over to legal. Uh, you can switch over to some of these European uh, size papers, and then if you need, I'll show that one more time. Go to size, go to the bottom, and you get the dialog box where you can uh, do some more adjusting uh, as well as change the print quality, and you can even change the, the number on the first page. Um, and then from here, you can get to print preview. Um, if you click on options, that brings up the options for your printer. So you can do all sorts of stuff from this dialog box, which we'll see uh, come up again in other instances. Um, if you just want to print, go here, print preview. Notice brings you over uh, to the backstage view. Backstage view means we don't see, we can't edit the document anymore. We're seeing kind of behind the scenes and we're in the file tab. That's all backstage view means. Uh, so here's what it would look like if we were to print it and we can see it's two pages wide and we can scroll through those. Uh, now you can always just head back. Um, so that's how to change the size and then how to change all the print options from this uh, dialog box. Now, what if I don't like this one column being by itself? That's pretty understandable. It looks pretty lonely out there. Uh, well, luckily I can, uh, I can make some changes. So maybe I want to um, split, zoom in a little so we can see. Maybe I want to split between, this looks like a good split right here. So here's what I'm going to do. I will put my cursor somewhere so that it's in column J. And I'm just going to go to breaks and insert page break. Now what happened? Is this, is this what I intended to happen? Well, I did get the split between I and J. I can zoom out and see, okay, now, oop, let me scroll over. Now there's more on the second page altogether. But what else did it do? Well, it split it this way as well. It did a split here and here. Um, so why was that? Well, remember my cursor was in J14. So that means that you're going to get a split between I and J. You're going to get a split between row 13 and 14. So just be careful. Um, I would maybe click down here. And let's see if that gives us what we are looking for instead. So I'll click down here, um, breaks. Now I insert page break. Ooh, it's doing something crazy. Okay, and now it didn't split it in the horizontal direction, but it did split it vertically into two parts. Perfect, that's just what I was looking for. Um, and I can always go back, click again, remove page break, or just reset them all. So I'm going to remove that page break. There we go. Okay, um, now what if I want to add a background <clears throat> to my worksheet? So let's click on background. Okay, um, maybe you have a picture that you want to put. Uh, let's put Beyonce as the background. Why not? Okay, and there's... Beyonce 
looking at us from the background, we can get rid of this and see, there she is. Um, kind of a big, uh, the, the way it's spread across many pages is pretty big. Uh, and so maybe I just want to delete that and I can click delete um, and I can always go back and do background and, and change it to, to something else. Now let's, let's put it again and see how this works. Um, you'll notice, oops, let me zoom in, in cells where I had a fill, anything that is filled, it can always go back back to my home tab and what if I put white well if I put white you're still not going to be able to see through to you know see more Beyonce uh, and why is that well you've you've just painted your background white if you want to see through the cells you're just gonna have to say no no fill and now you can see through it um, so let me undo twice um, so let's say you wanted to add some more out here, um, bonus, maybe they're getting a second bonus, bonus uh, number two. And what you'll notice is this, it automatically filled it in for me, but I can always say, hey, don't fill it because I want to see, I don't want to block, you know, Beyonce's forehead. Maybe you really don't want to block that, okay? Um, so I'm going to get rid of that. Um, so that's how you do backgrounds, and this is how you delete a background. All right. Um, next, moving on, let's uh, let's add some new people to our table because, as I mentioned before, this is a short, fat table. I'm going to go to this last uh, worksheet, additional workers, and I have a lot more uh, employees here that maybe I want to add to the table. So let me go, and I'm going to highlight from A1 down to M. 27. And remember, you can. There's a, many ways to do this. Control C. Um, you can right click, and we could copy it, or go to Home, and then cuts here, and copies right there. Great. Let's go back to our table, and I'm gonna click in A18 because I want them to go right with. The, the rest of the table. I don't want to start a new table or uh, anything like that. And now I can right click or I could do insert and insert copied cells. It's going to be the same thing as if I do this and insert copied cells. So let's let's go ahead and do that. It's going to ask me, hey, uh, you know, there's, there's already writing here. There's already content. Um, so should we push it to the right? that way or should we push it down that way um, and I want to I still want these to be underneath my table so let's shift them down I don't want this little thing and this thing to be pushed over here I want it below uh, so I'm gonna click OK there we go we have all these employees now great um, okay so let's do this let's go back to view um, we're in page layout view, uh, but what am I not seeing? Ah, my, my margin. So let's add my margins back. Cool. So this, this is fine. Um, this looks like I wanted it to look. However, let's say you go and print this out. You print this out, you're at a corporate meeting for Annie's Awesome Lemonade Stand, and you go to see, um, you know, how, how much is, uh, how much is Martin working on Wednesday. Well, which day is Wednesday? There's no, I would have to go back to the previous page to see. Um, and on the computer, of course, you just scroll up, but on paper, that can be kind of a headache, right? Because uh, I don't know if, you know, maybe this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but maybe it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know. I, I can't tell which day is which. Uh, if you know, Raymond worked two hours this day, but, but what day is that? Was that Thursday or who knows? Well, luckily there's a solution for this. We can take this nice header <clears throat> that we created and we can make it print out on every page. Uh, so let's do that. Go to page layout and you're going to go to print titles. 
and you get this dialog box which by this point should look pretty familiar um, and print area we oh, we skipped over that one we'll, we'll come back and get print area um, but print titles that's what we're looking for and do we want to repeat a row or a column well row eight that's let's exit this row eight that's where the important stuff is that's where that's what we were looking for and we want to be repeated so here's all we need to do we go to print titles uh, and rows to repeat at the top click on this and you're gonna say hey I want row eight and I just clicked on the number eight uh, over here uh, if you delete that <clears throat> You don't have to click on the eight. You can, you can just click on any cell within row eight. It works the same. And you'll notice a little special notation pops up. It says uh, dollar sign eight colon dollar sign eight. That is just Excel's way of telling itself that you want row eight to appear. Because uh, if you remember, colon signifies through. And anytime we're talking about a cell range, and this is a cell range, correct? It's, it's from A8 all the way down to, well, all the way down as far as we're printing. Um, so to L8, but even kind of in Excel's mind, it, it's going to include everything M8 and N all the way to Z and beyond and beyond and beyond. Um, so oops, I accidentally did it twice. Let me delete this. Um, so it's just saying, hey, I want to do from row eight to row eight for infinity. That's all it means. Um, once you've clicked that, just hit enter. OK, um, and now I can click OK and look at what happens. It popped a copy of that row right where I need it and now at the top of this page I don't have to worry about wondering which day is which um, now let's um, let's look at our document now and notice well we, we have this table here um, and Excel kind of chose for us that this documents only going to be two pages big because you know we have content on this page and this page um, all the way down to here I have some blank space but it's not gonna print a page three because it's smart enough to know there's nothing on page three I haven't even clicked on page three but then notice as soon as I click on page three that page kind of uh, comes to life it it um, as if it were going to print it and I even get this special row repeated at the top of page three. Um, so that's really smart of Excel. It's trying to save you paper. It knows you don't want to print where you don't, where you haven't even clicked. It's not going to print infinite pages. Now, what if we wanted to, to do some changing here and fit all of this onto one page? Maybe we don't even care about, uh, for example, this. Well, luckily, that's, that's really simple to change. Um, so let's do this. I currently, uh, maybe I decided, well, let's, let's print this, but I only want this table. I do not care about this down here. Well, that's fine. We, we can do that. Um, so I'm going to zoom out a little and let me highlight from A1, that's this huge cell, and I'm going to go all the way down to... Oops, it's not letting me, s okay, to M34, is that everybody? No, I need to get all the way down here. So let me scroll from down here. Oop, hold on. Careful what you're clicking. From down here, all the way up. So my cell range, come on. Okay, cell range from A1 to M44. That's all I want to print. Well, it's really simple. All you have to do is highlight that. And then you go to print area and you click set print area and you'll notice you get a special border around that when you go um, if you change to any other view though or even in this view you're still gonna see your other content we still this still exists it's not like it's gone um, however it's not gonna print so if I do file and I go to print and I want to see my print preview notice how 
it's not it didn't include the other stuff. So that's that's what um, what I've done is just change my print area. That's all. Uh, now I can always let's say I kind of regret that um, I chose poorly. Maybe I didn't want to to get rid of that. Just go back and clear the print area. Okay, and now if you go and look at your print preview, it's it's there. So you did include it. Okay, so that's um, that is the print area. Um, now let's talk about changing how many pages you're printing because maybe I uh, I want this all to fit onto one page because I think well two pages is too much. Uh, luckily you can do that. Really simple. Um, all you have to do is go to height and currently this is two pages tall and just go to height and just make it one page. And what did it do? Look at what happened. It scrunched all your data really tiny so it all fit on one page. Um, Okay, and let's go back to automatic. If you go back to automatic, what happened? Well, it, it didn't change it back. Um, oop, whoa, that's way too close, huh? It did not change um, your document back to bigger than it was before. So if you wanted to make your cells big again, you're going to have to to highlight them and then say, hey, uh, let's go back to you know being slightly wider. There you go. And that looks pretty much like the old one, maybe a little bigger. There we go. And then it also adjusted the width when it did uh, the height. So I'm going to have to change those as well. And even my font is smaller. So it, it's it's kind of hard to, uh, to reverse um, that change. But another way you can play with the size is to change the scale. So you can bump up the scale, um, down the scale. Okay, and that just makes your document smaller or larger. So let's go... Let's wait for it to catch up. So now I'm at 20%. Let's zoom out and let's see. Okay, so that's 20% uh, really tiny. Oh man, sorry, let me find my document. Okay, and then if I want to make it really big, I could, uh, you know, 100% is my original size. So let's put 100%. Okay, and that's since I've tinkered with it, it when I put it at 100%, it's going to be bigger than it was before. But 100% is the, the standard. And then if I really want it to, to be a lot bigger, I could go over 100%. Okay. Um, so let's do, uh, let's do 200 or 2. Let's just do 220. And right now we have it two pages wide. Let's see how big it's going to be after. See, now it's three pages wide, so it got a lot uh, bigger. That's what scaling does. So the larger this number, the larger your document's going to be. Um, there is a dialog box for this, and we've seen this before. We have seen this before when uh, we click on any of these, and we go to more. There it is. It's the same box. Um, so if you want to do the scaling, you can either do the percentage like right here or you can say hey I want it to I want you to make it one page by one page and let's see how that does 